Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld with a Digital Rebar in Kubernetes demo. Uh, this is something that I presented at KubeCon, uh, which is a zero configuration, and I do mean zero configuration pattern for Kubernetes deployments um, via Digital Rebar on unmanaged infrastructure, and we're going to talk about that. My goal here is to actually jump right into the deployment um, and not give you too much buildup. If you want, you can read the presentation, it's online, or you can watch it. Um, and we're doing a webinar about this where we'll spend some time. But I want to just drive right through the, the actual install and then decompose it a little bit for you here. So basically, we're going to start with uh, several nodes. I've got uh, six in the infrastructure right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to, they're already installed, the operating system is installed, but we're going to take some steps where we install Docker, we attach the disks, then we run kubeadmin init. We'll talk about the election process because this is an elected, that we don't, we don't touch the node, uh, the nodes find which one's going to be the master themselves and then run kubem in init, install the cluster token, and then once the token has been identified, the kubeadmin join command is passed to all the other nodes and they basically become the full cluster. Uh, and then we do some things where we actually pull back uh, the config file uh, so that I can use that locally and then uh, configure my node via proxy or on, on the system itself. So we have, we have some cool little things that we've been uh, working through and refining for this. Um, but basically building a, a Kubernetes cluster very quickly um, without any pre-knowledge of what the system is. We'll come to terminals in a minute. In the meantime, I've got, this is Digital Rebar. Uh, if you're interested more, go to the project site, rebar.digital. Uh, we have tons of videos about how to install and get things going. And at the end of the, the initial install, I will show you how I got here. So first we're going to show you the more finished cake, and then we're going to show you how to, to make the cake. In this case, I've got six nodes um, already in the system, and um, I've already attached them to the Kubernetes profile that I built. They're all in Sledgehammer wait, which means they're waiting for instructions. They're basically just clean machines. Uh, and what that looks like from a workflow perspective here is this cluster RAM is we're going to go to mount disks, we're going to install Docker, we're going to run crib, which is our Kubernetes rebar immutable bootstrapping install. And then we're going to go back to Sledgehammer wait, which is just waiting for more instructions. We've already gone through this discover uh, packet discover, which registers the machines in packet hosts, which is our, our hosting uh, where we're using the bare metal from, and then it waits for instructions. Uh, and before I begin that process, I want to go to my profile. So this cluster RAM profile is our, our RAM only profile. And I want to make sure there are no, um, I have my, my past attempts at doing this aren't cluttering up the idea. So just the only thing we've defined is our stage map, which I just showed you. And then our, um, that I've said, hey, this, the profile is Kate's cluster RAM. So it knows where to store the information it's going to generate. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and oops, log into the system. So there's a, so I want, uh, this is my machines view. I want to take some actions. So that means I'm going to need to be logged in as a rack and user. There's no cost for this as a community. It's part of the community parts of the UX, but um, I'm going to be able to go in, get my bulk action screen here. And then for my bulk action screens, I can then set all of the machines into that new workflow. So all I have to do here is go into, not boot environment, the actual stage. And I want to say mount local disks. So that's going to start this other workflow path. And when I say go here, it's going to go through and you can see it's already updated mount local disks. And it will start the process of actually automating those, those tasks uh, and you can you can actually watch it working in the background as it's moving through the workflow from Mount Local Disk to, to Docker install. When Docker install is done, it's going to go straight through the Kubernetes if I, uh, the crib install process. And what that looks like here is here's Docker install. I can jump in and see live log. This is a running job. So as that that job is done, I will start getting live events back for that that uh, system and I'll be able to see if there's new tasks and work being done uh, for that machine. Okay, uh, and so here's some previous jobs. In all probability, we're moving through pretty well. Um, let me show you what crib install looks like. 
and we'll get there in just a second. Uh, so there's a stage called crib install here. Uh, this is a standard uh, content pack. I'll show you that uh, when we review the demo in a little bit more detail. Um, and inside of crib install is a task called crib install. That crib install has a template. That template is just running kubeadmin. So um, it does, it elects a master, then it runs kubeadmin init, and then it, uh, the, the non-master nodes wait until kubeadmin init um, is complete, and then it gets the cluster join command. I'll show you exactly what that looks like in just a moment. So if we go over the profiles, all of those things are going to get stored back into our, pro into our profile map. And what should happen here is that as the system goes through this process, it's going to uh, identify one of the machines, one of the nodes as a master. That's the first task in, kube, in the crib task. Um, it will inject it back into this profile. And we'll see that update dynamically as the system comes in. And then once uh, kubeadmin init is run, we will store the join command and then the config file and things like that. And you can actually see down below, I'm, I'm watching, it might be right at the edge of your screen. Uh, so move it up a little bit for you. Um, I'm actually watching the events go through here as we can see different jobs um, that are being, being executed by the system. So now we just dynamically updated uh, one of the machines. We now know that node E06 is the master for this node. All the other nodes are going to be locked out and waiting. We're going to keep accumulating. Now, something to note here is that I have not touched the system. <laughs> I put them in the initial state, all nodes simultaneously, and this, the, the, the bring up of those nodes is actually going through and making those changes. And this would be true if I could do it all the way from fresh boot. I could reset the machines and they'd automatically come back through. I, I don't have to elect a master. I can inject the master information. Um, fundamentally, the nodes have enough workflow that they can come in elect a master if needed, and then join the cluster all together uh, by themselves. And you'll, you'll see that process go through. Uh, so let's see. And then uh, the digital rebar screens are updating dynamically behind the scenes, so I don't even have to click refresh or anything like that. They're all coming in. Let's see, e EO6. Uh, and so they're updating. Uh, what you'll see in here is where this one's finished, so it's now at Sledgehammer Wait. Uh, the other nodes are still working on, doc, uh, on the Docker install, so things are different, different states, which is perfectly fine. Um, and we'll see them come through the install process as we go. If I want, I can look at all of the jobs that are running and make sure nothing's breaking. Uh, so you can see my in-process jobs. If something had failed, I think uh, previous history I have uh, some of my other pages if, uh, might have my show. Here you go. So if there's errors, we're going to see what the errors are. We can actually jump in and get um, a log of what happened depending on what the issues are. Uh, we work really hard on transparency for this. Um, and so if I go back to my profile, cluster RAM profile, now that the cluster is built, I actually have the join command that's being used by the other nodes and my cluster admin conf file. So this is my token, my cluster keys, all those, all those pieces, which is super handy because I don't want to have to log into the machines. I don't even want to have to have SSH on them. And this is where I can come in to my terminal. I can go back and grab, let's see, where is it? It's not that far back. I'll tell you exactly what this machine is, what this command is doing. Uh, this is the command. So DRP CLI is the digital rebar CLI. It's going to the profiles and it's getting this K8 cluster RAM. That's this profile that I've been showing you and the parameter crib cluster admin conf. That's exactly the parameter I was just showing you and we're putting it in the admin conf file. So now that same file is going to be in my admin um, in my admin location, right? So now I can come back and I can do some cool stuff. Here's my kube, my kube cuddle. I'm telling it to use my config file and I'm going to say get nodes. And here it's come back and said, this is my local machine. I didn't log into any of the nodes. I don't even know which nodes they are, 
uh, realistically, I just pulled down that comp file and it's told me I now have three notes in the system. Now, ultimately, I'm going to have more. So if I jump back over to here, we'll see how our machines are doing. We've got uh, three machines that are not up yet. They're still in Docker install for some reason. So I could actually go and troubleshoot, find out what's going on. Um, could just be slow network waiting on that job to complete. Um, and for this demo, it's it's not the goal is not to be troubleshooting, but to sort of walk through the demo and show you what's going on. And I can actually wipe them and we'll restart. And then there's another thing that's really fun with this. So this is get nodes, but I can also turn in. I'm going to check my crib sheet over here. Here's my crib sheet. So I can check all namespaces, and then of course I can turn on my kubectl proxy. So if I do this, so now I've actually started a proxy through 127, 8000. So now if I jump back to my machine, this is the API authenticated using the local comp file, and this is my dashboard file. So inside of this demo, uh, very limited time, very quickly, I've been able to get a complete Kubernetes install working with local auth um, and my, my cluster running. Uh, and I, then we can start doing other, other interesting stuff, but it's basically a, a you bake it Kubernetes. Uh, now, if you want to do this, something similar, let me, let me spin you backwards. Of course, you start with digital rebar. Uh, in this case, we've, we've provisioned things in packet. Uh, I'm not going to go through that tons of videos on, on how to bring up these base nodes. And you can see now two of the, another one of the nodes has now joined the cluster. Um, we're just pulling down a lot, of, a lot of bandwidth. Sometimes these machines are going to be slower. But you can say, ah, oh, Rob, this, is, this isn't what I wanted. I actually wanted to um, go in and build this cluster uh, to disk, right? This is using Sledgehammer and this immutable memory state weight. Um, you can say, you know what, this isn't really what I was looking for. What I want to do is I want to take these machines and put them through a different profile. So let me show you what we, we have another profile here. This one is designed to do a regular cluster install. I've, I've run it before, so let me do a little cleanup. So I'm removing uh, our everything but the name of the profile. All right, so now if I go back into here, I just have my stage map and my the name of the profile, which is all set. Good. And then from here, my workflow, it's easier to see it in the workflow than in the profile definition. I can come into cluster install and uh, here I'll show you the cluster RAM, just went mount disk, stocker install, crib install, and done. But my regular cluster install is a little bit more sophisticated. It's going to start with set 7, it's going to get my SH keys, it's going to turn on the runner service so I can keep running. Um, and then we're going to do some more interesting things. We're going to finish the install, which is going to let it reboot. Uh, and then we're going to come, when it comes back in, we've attached a disk because it's a regular OS install, not an in-memory install. We're going to install Docker, which we need. Then we're going to run crib install. So exactly the same post steps, and then we're just going to be done. We're going to say it's successful. And so to make this happen, I've already cleaned out the profile, so I don't have any of my earlier junk. Sorry, my additional configuration parameters. And so what we want to do here is instead of using um, this, this system that I have running, uh, what I want to do is we're going to pause and we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, you know what, I don't want to be the cluster RAM profile. Take that off. I want to be in the cluster install pro, uh, profile. Oops, it's not happy about that refresh since it's probably confused. All right. Put it in cluster install. There we go. So now you can see I'm in cluster install for all these systems, but they're not in the right stage. So to make all this stuff work, what I want to do instead of, of this is I want to go ahead and say, you know what, I'd really like you to start in the sent seven status. Good. Uh, and not all of them made it. You'll see I actually got some errors because of where things were. So we're going to force things into Sense 7. A little bit more forceful. So now my stage is Sense 7. I, they're all paused, so I, I haven't started anything. And I'm going to say go ahead and reset, power cycle, and start. 
And so in this case, now I'm rebooting all those nodes. So that's going to start a Cent7 process. It's going to install CentOS 7. It's going to uh, install the agent so it's available, and then it's going to reboot the machines, and then it's going to install Docker, and then install Kubernetes. Not quite as fast as just going straight from my in-memory environment and running, but a completely automated, persistent, rebootable Kubernetes install using exactly the same Kubernetes install code as anything else. Um, and these are pretty standard practices for what you can enable with Digital Rebar. Um, once again, I only have a small system in here. The, the UX is actually designed that I could build pretty sophisticated clusters and, and look at things one cluster at a time and data center rack however we needed to do it. Um, and I've got a couple of things installed in here like the packet uh, plugin that allows me to get SSH and API calls. So that simulates out of band management using packets API so I can do reboots uh, and other controls. Uh, I did promise you that I would show you what the content packages look like. So in this case, the crib package here um, is one that is available in at Fork. It's we don't have it in open yet. Um, we're try we're happy to share it with people, um, and you can actually. It's, there's not much code in there. It's all fully available. Um, it's re relatively small. Uh, I can show you the raw JSON. Uh, amount of amount of templates and parameters. The way you get this is you can just do a standard digital rebar install. If you go to your catalog, you will see crib uh, in the catalog, and you can just add it into your items. And then from there, you would be able to go back to your endpoint. One of the benefits of logging is you can you get storing you store multiple endpoints and it remembers them for you. Uh, but then I can just go into my content packages and then select which uh, content I want to transfer over. So when I transfer, it goes from being in the uh, SAS library onto your local DRP provision, right? Once it's there, it's there. Um, there's a couple other things that I have installed in this uh, just that we use to make things easier, like our task library. Um, Packet IPMI comes in with the um, plugin provider, so there's a several different plugin providers that are available also um, depending on how you want to set up your system. Uh, and I, I strongly recommend playing around with the, the content a little bit and pulling in different things and playing with different different use cases. We have videos about all those things. Um, but that's about it. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily need to drag out the video. I showed you how to do a Kubernetes install. I showed you how to reset that Kubernetes install, uh, changing around your profiles so that you could get um, some different capabilities. So one thing I would say uh, in building this cluster up that you need to be able to do is you have to name, this is the one requirement, you have to have a crib cluster profile uh, parameter in that profile for it to work. You don't even have to have a stage map. You could have a generic stage map. Um, this is uh, our CTO getting a little fancy and having different stage maps for different, different deployments. Um, the stage map is what drives workflows. Uh, so our global, in this case, my global workflow is just goes from discover into wait, uh, and then uh, these are per profile workflows. So I'll explain what that means. So if you had a lot of machines in your environment and you wanted different machines to have different workflows, different uh, behaviors, depending on how they were in the system, you can put workflows in profiles, attach profiles to machines, and then when those profiles are in the, the state at the start, they will automatically transition through all of the stages that come after. So you put a machine in a stage, it looks up its, its stage in the workflow, and then it, it basically handles uh, progression through that workflow. Um, if that doesn't make sense, jump in on community, ask some questions. Uh, the, the stages are, are pretty straightforward. Um, we have quite a few of them. Uh, the green ones are, are final states, the yellow ones are transitory states. Um, and then you can do things like monitor big uh, system changes uh, through an environment. So this, as, as you have a lot of progress going on in your system, you can actually watch machines and what stages they're in with dynamic updates. Um, you'll get very similar behavior here as the system goes through its process. You'll see its uh, stage changes. Uh, based on live updates, and of course you can watch live updates uh, from the the view here also. Wow! All right, so started with a quick demo. 
pulled back a little bit to show you how we built uh, this Kubernetes demo and what the pieces are, what I invite you to do is go through and uh, take a look at you know how the stages are constructed. Um, it's certainly a very simple thing to go in to look at the tasks and, and to take the crib install task, uh, sorry, the crib install template, and really look at what this code looks like. It's, it's pretty straightforward bash. Um, it's templatized, so it's a, a Google uh, Golang, not Google, Golang template substitution, and you can put in variables um, based on that syntax or defaults and things like that. And this is a thing that, so a reference example, we're, we're happy to collaborate with people who want to extend it, change it, decompose it into smaller units. Tasks are definitely decomposable. Um, a lot of our a lot of our tasks in the system are not quite as monolithic as that, but actually designed to uh, use different pieces and parts um, and have, well, have multiple templates in them. The ones I'm, I'm clicking on don't. As an example, they're just single. Um, the other thing to point out if you're not used to digital rebar is the templates I'm showing you, uh, tasks and stages are all read only, which means that they can be patched from a centralized location. So if we find a bug or a change, uh, the read-only templates allow us to uh, create a, a fix for that and then you can download and pull in updated components. If you need to make changes to any of these things, so if I wanted to uh, change my template for, where is it, my template for, uh, I've already done one, crib right here, I could clone that template. I could call it Rob's template, and then I could start making changes to it. And then at that point, um, whoops, you would see that I would have a template available here. Um, it's on the next page. Right, so here's, and I could then create a stage and embed it into a stage and do things like that. Um, but this allows me to make changes to it. Um, everything I'm showing you, of course, you can do via the API and the CLI. Um, pretty normal stuff. We have tons of videos about things like that. Uh, I hope this was helpful. We're very excited about showing uh, Kubernetes made this simple. Um, and we have some other topics about the uh, master election and atomic locking that was enabled uh, in the 3.4 release to uh, make this, this really this um, simple and fast of a Kubernetes install. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this video and check out our other ones.